Have you ever sat in an office meeting and wondered when is this going to end so I can go and do some real work? Well, if you have, then you're not alone. An author, David Pearl, estimates that large corporates waste millions of dollars every year in unproductive meetings. And I caught up with David during a recent trip to Singapore to find out what companies can do to take the inefficiency out of their meetings. Discussion meetings, decision meetings, problem-solving meetings. Do you know the difference? Well, according to author David Pearl in his new book, Will There Be Donuts? A company can change the way it does business by changing the way it does meetings. Companies all around the world seem to spend a lot of their time in meetings, and it's a common complaint. You know, I can't get on with my work because I'm stuck in meetings. And I see this from very senior leadership down. Um, consequently, people have become kind of anti-meeting in itself. Now, my, part of what I'm saying in the book is we have to make a distinction. Nearly meetings, what I call nearly meetings, are meetings that are indeed wasting your time. So why is this so critical for businesses? I'll say to people, um, how many hours a day do you spend in meetings? And they'll say what it is, and then I'll say how many hours are inefficient? And they'll say, I don't know, if, imagine there's two inefficient hours a day, which is not which is not un, un, unreasonable, okay? So two ineffective hours builds up to 55 lost days a year. That's six years of an average career. So just let that sink in. When people realize, actually, you know, those two hours are costing me six years of my life. And then you say to the business, okay, let's just put the, put the salaries into the calculation. And you're talking about millions of pounds or millions of dollars being lost every year. So the very first thing for the senior people to understand is this is not a soft problem. It is a soft problem, if you like, but it has a very hard center. I describe it like a, like a cloud with a mountain inside it. Some of the businesses I work with are, are losing hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And, and you need to get the board to understand that. Because until they do, it becomes a kind of HR problem. And it's people put up posters on the wall and say, you know, the techniques of meeting, and I can go through some of them, are really not that, uh, you know, mysterious. But first, you need the real will from the top outwards. Okay, that's, that's the first thing. Because um, trying to make uh, superficial changes will not, will not do it. So you need to get the top of the house clear, and they need to start practicing. I understand that you actually got a chief executive of a company to saw his boardroom table in half. Can you tell me a little bit about that? My friend Andre, uh, who became a friend, he was actually a client, uh, ran a large international uh, insurance company. And he is part of a much larger conglomerate. I won't go into names, but a, but a, a major player. Um, and this is the man who sawed up his table. I didn't actually tell him to saw up his table. He decided to do that. But the reason was really not about meetings initially. The reason he had a business ambition. He wanted his unit, his business unit, to flourish, to be distinctive, not just within the organization, but to customers. And he was frustrated by the uh, routine. And he thought, you know, if we could meet differently, we could work differently. And so I talked to him about some ideas. And one of the things I said was, you know, coming from the theatre, you realise that the environment very often dictates how we are. If you go into a very formal, quite a stuffy board meeting, you know, the, the, the tendency is just to sit there and sort of think, wow, I'm going to keep it to myself. And this is not the cult, kind of culture that, uh, that, that Andre wanted. And I swear one day I turned up, it was early with working with him and his team, and I heard this sound, it sounded like, you know, it sounded like a, a machine tool or sort of a heavy machinery. And I went in, I swear, they had built this table and it was all plumbed in, you know, it had the wires in. I swear he and his guys were there with the facility, but they were literally sawing the table up because they wanted, to, they wanted to get the stuffiness out of the boardroom. And instead they had a much more of a, you know, Tony Blair did this, apparently, in, in number 10. Instead of being around the cabinet table, he put sofas in so people could relax and, and really talk in a more informal way. So this was literally a case of people sawing up, uh, sawing up the ballroom table. That isn't something that everyone has to do, you understand? But it certainly, it sent a strong signal to the rest of the organisation. 
And for companies here in Asia, what are some of the basic things that they should be looking at to tweak their meeting style? I think one of the basic things is to really audit your time and look at meeting time across the organization and distinguish the different types of meetings. Here's one of the problems is meetings is a very general term for very many different things. It's like saying, I like food. And, uh, you know, there's, like this morning at breakfast, there's a whole buffet of everything from, you know, there's English food and Malay food and Chinese food. So in meeting terms, I distinguish in the book different types of meetings that require different types of attention, different types of time, different types of resources. So, for example, there's, you know, discussion meetings are different from decision meetings, are different from problem-solving meetings, are different from sales meetings. And what I would get people to do is first audit what are the meetings you're having and then look at the following thing. Which are the value-generating meetings? Which are the value-generating meetings? Because when you ask people what the meeting's for, they'll give you the objective. Well, that's our show for this week. If you have any questions or comments, you'll find us at channelnewsasia.com slash moneymind. You'll also find us on Facebook. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.